Well, speaking of society, how about the society of LinkedIn and uh, something else getting the axe uh, over there, Katie? <laughs> I had to laugh because I didn't. It was like I think it was there for so LinkedIn is scrapping the stories feature mm-hmm. uh, to push more short form videos, and I feel like it was like barely around <laughs> introduced in su- September last year. Same that seems right. Sweet. That seems right. Yeah. And then it's going away. I'm sorry if that was your big thing and you were super excited about it, but it's going away. <laughs> well, it, one like, less thing to worry about. Yeah. It was one, one less place to create stuff and put things. And But yeah, it was just interesting. And uh, folks that found out first were the uh, people who were advertising mm-hmm. <laughs> in, in, like their ads that ran in between stories. But uh, I think... <laughs> hey thanks for putting all the money into this thing that we're killing um yeah and that's that's gonna and i know i know you know we we you know we've both seen these discussions over on our slack for social media about the things that are you know going in you know in and out and getting canned and and you know that kind of thing and and what that does to your planning right mm-hmm. so um you know if that's like hey linkedin's a place that we do this and okay we got the stories and that makes a lot of sense and we're developing things specifically for stories and now you just don't and it's just like, okay, yeah. where does that go? But I mean, that's part of it is seeing these things come and go. Um, as uh, I think I was mentioning about OnlyFans last week, if you're not in control of your platform, um, then you're at the whim of it, right? So, mm-hmm. and that's that's the same thing with LinkedIn or anything else. Man, I was really good at fleets. Well, sorry, you were the only one. Um, <laughs> so we decided that's not a thing anymore, right? So um, I'm looking at memberships on YouTube as a, as a uh, potential option to just to kind of break into that audience a little bit. And I also realize I'm not going to deprecate my membership services that are not on YouTube because I don't trust YouTube. Because you, YouTube, you, you saw how your butt was age restricted on yeah. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even my bare butt. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so, I mean, if, in, you know, if they think it, you know, if they think it's something that, you know, they want to restrict there's, and there's just nothing you can do. I'm going to fight over music. I keep saying it's like I have rights to this music. And then it's uh, the, the person also has it through CD baby. And they say and they've been denying me lately. They used to not deny me. Um, but uh, but it's like there's nothing I can do about it except for a place to track at this point with their really free music to, to, to do monetization, you know, so which just sucks because I want to, you know, I'd love to, you know, with somebody I want to support. You know, with with uh, with something like that, but you know, they throw the monetization on it and it screws up my whole thing that I'm trying to do. So, anyways, not to mention what, yeah. not to mention what Twitter's been doing to all our wrestling friends who have Jeez. are doing workouts. Yes, yeah. uh, chill. Have you heard about this? So, so what do you do when you're a wrestler? You cut a promo on somebody. You say they're going to kick their ass, right? Now you're in violation of Twitter's. Uh, policies inciting violence or implying violence implying violence so wow. multiple people that had had large large twitter followings gone bam no recourse they have to start new accounts um and you know the like like one one discussion i saw is like you know hey if you're going to do this like switch to videos they can't scan the videos right or at least they're, they're not, you know, Texas, you know, they can look for keywords and there's enough of that. Right. So like, that's, that's a thing. That's a thing you got to watch out wow. for now. Um, they, they could, you know, remember uh, a year ago, last, last summer, uh, when everybody was cracking down and everybody was getting quick bans and everybody was getting flagged and re- under review and things like that. Right. Like, like, because they decided to, because of other things going on, they do, it has nothing to do with the kind of things that we do. Right. So you're at the whim of all these platforms. So remember that. I hope you have a backup platform or you're driving traffic to something that you control if you're trying to make money or a community on these platforms. All right. And this has been my TED Talk. So when you when you when you when that happens to your account, does it get so this is where I think and we were talking about like the link trees. Mm-hmm. When when that happens to your account, is the account locked or is it deleted? Um, you, uh, Katie, it depends. Yeah, it depends. So if you do, so something else a lot of our friends are getting hit with on Twitter is they'll be working out and they'll have the radio on or whatever in the background, yes. and yes. Um, they're getting and these aren't videos who are recent. These are 
t videos from a little bit ago that they're they're going through now and finding and um, they're supposed to be warning you about copyright and all that good stuff, but you don't necessarily get the warnings and then you essentially it just your account um, is it, they don't delete it it still exists like your page your is there but it looks like you have it says zero followers not following anyone yeah um, and then is, is the like, bio still there yeah so your bio so that's why so that's why I think the link trees are important. Because if you have a link tree in your bio, they can always hit the link tree and then get to, and like there's so many people that I've seen recently, either posting backup accounts or posting, mm -hmm. posting their link tree or posting wherever like, hey, if I get, yeah, if I get banned. Yep. Here's how to keep so, following me. So and also keeping that like do a you know your dutters.com right and that goes to your link tree so of like oh hey my twitter's not around anymore you can update that link tree and people know they're like what happened to her twitter and they go to dutters.com or like okay here's the new one you know or here's where else she is or something right because dutters been putting too many butts on the internet you know <laughs> so and, and twitter said that's enough it's enough of your butt dutters okay she got, she got banned from only fans yeah you now got it's... butt banned you got butt banned <laughs> butt dutters banned. so but um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah, it's so yeah, it's going to be a problem. I mean, you know, something similar has happened several years ago. Um, remember when Pepsi got angry because of a beheading that was going around YouTube, yeah. and one of the fallout things from that were there were promotions that do very well on the independents, and they were putting clips up of their wrestling matches, and all of a sudden, and they're making they were making a pretty good bit. A nice bit to to support their small independent wrestling business, and then YouTube um, just deprecated anything that looked even a little bit like violent content, which meant pro wrestling as a whole, and everybody got demonetized for that. Um, so it, I mean, it killed your business plan is YouTube. Uh, man, I hope that's only a percentage of your business plan, right? And you're putting that money into something else in case that goes away. Like that's the biggest thing like like that everybody's going to have to learn. You know, all these kids uh, uh uh you know getting monetized on TikTok. Some TikTok can change their minds. TikTok the, the the owners of TikTok might be a sketchy thing in a country that likes to do things like limit video games for 3 hours a week. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen there. Or, you know, but from that to another platform that wants you to, to make money on them, uh, Twitter's got something going on. <laughs> um, Twitter starts launching ticketed spaces for some iOS users. So now that fleets are gone, all I see are the spaces conversations at the top of my uh, my uh, my iOS app. I keep wanting to do it. I keep wanting to port this show into it. But also, I keep remembering, this is only on mobile, and even this ticketed spaces, I want to have a conversation. I want to have the Sorg tech TED Talk about uh, uh, deplatforming that I just had on Spaces, right? And I can charge you guys five bucks a, a pop to come in and listen to that uh, uh, non-recorded uh, thing that's going to happen there, right? But only if you're on iOS. <laughs> so... I guess that's a big enough user base, but that that seems like a pretty limited start uh, spot. What do you think, Katie? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at what you're putting up, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I, I think it's great because it's another place to make money, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. but it's also another place to put your content and. <laughs> yeah, well, well, in this case, it's it, it's it's talking, right? It's yeah. it's taking time to. Uh, uh, create an audience or maybe you have your audience and there's something else you can do with that audience you've created. You know, I don't know too many people should be doing this from scratch necessarily. Um, you know, Hey, we want to have our awesome cast conversation. Maybe we'll have an awesome cast post show over here and everybody drops a buck in or something like that. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of kind of options you can do with that. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just found show partner. YouTube is, Buttist is Bradley involved with YouTube somehow? Yeah, that could be. That's possible. <laughs> that is possible. So, um, but I don't know. It, it's a, uh, it's another option. It's another option. Yeah, it's it's. It wasn't last week we talked about was it Spotify that was doing something with um, their podcast where they were putting it um, 
where you could subscribe for anywhere from like a dollar to whatever outrageous amount you wanted. Yeah, it was like so the we, subscriptions I, thing and, and, and that kind of thing, right? Yeah, so we're seeing, um, I mean, it, it seems like there's a lot more subscription-based stuff for creators popping up all over so, the place now. I mean, and again, you know, hey, just like we're seeing with the OnlyFans, and we can roll right into that story after this, but like we're on Patreon and we make, you know, we pay the bills for this in Wrestling Mayhem show. It justifies those things still existing with the money that you guys on Patreon do uh, use it. Um, I already almost ran afoul of Patreon user agreements when I talked with one of them, uh, a, a representative over at a, at, at a conference a couple of years ago. Um, but they can decide we don't want to support wrestling violence podcasts or we say something weird on our podcast and they decide they don't want us to be a part of their platform anymore we have no recourse right so maybe it's good to diversify at least and hey we got patreon if you like that but the same stuff is over you can subscribe to us on on itunes subscriptions and spotify and things like that but anyways that how did i get over to this <laughs> so, <laughs> i was trying to lead into a different story wasn't i Oh, yeah, OnlyFans. Uh, turns out uh, the porn's okay by them. What what made them reverse? Uh, the backlash and realizing backlash. how many people... lose all their money. So how many people that already had audiences already went to other platforms and realized... I, I, like, so... So... I'm, I, I, and this sounded like there was a mix of the MasterCard... Um, implications on this and investors like there was a banking issue on top of this as well um it looks like it was more than just one reason that went to the original call of them saying no no nudity porn content on only fans starting in october um so they retracted that uh, but still i mean if i if only fans is my thing as a creator i, I and i'm doing something in that realm that they were going to ban, I, I, I'd be a little concerned about that, right? Well, I know I've seen the conversations with um, friends that um, did have content on OnlyFans and like the platforms they're talking about that there, there's so many more out there. Like oh, OnlyFans, absolutely. And a lot of them gave um, the ones that they're moving to, migrating to, give the creators much more money uh, instead of, it sounds like OnlyFans was taking a decent amount per thing and it's, so I, I, I am glad that that people are like I'm out, <laughs> especially after all that. Like you make up your mind or mm -hmm. you know support your creators. Uh, but the, just like hmm. but the big the big discussion that's come out of this is that uh, Visa and Mastercard have become the morality police for the internet. By well, they they put the thumb on the scale for Pornhub about some things and actually honestly some things that Pornhub probably should have been taken care of up until that point too. Um, some some really not okay content. Um, but, but also in doing that, they killed a lot of the, um, I think amateur content on Pornhub. Is that right? Like everything needs yeah. to be, everything needs to be verified a little more stringently now, uh, in order to put your content on there. If you are a creator on Pornhub, um, so, you know, and, and whatever you think of the kind of content, that's still, um, a, a restriction on creators. You know, what if YouTube needed to have every, everything verified that went on there? So it wouldn't exist for one thing. That's what section 230 is for, right? So, uh, yeah. So that's that. That's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be. Uh, let's get and take a chunk out of OnlyFans as a company, but uh, we'll see what the next OnlyFans is going to rise up uh, beyond that, right? So.